Hello and welcome. This is the Mix Sizzle and Shake Your Business podcast today coming to you on video. And today, guys, I have such a super special guest that I'm going to be interviewing. This guy is so talented and so unique in what he brings to the table. He is into some of the things you might know that I'm into, like creativity, imagination, and his talent is just oozing. So I can't wait to introduce you. This guy, his name is Brian Carr. He's a photographer. I met him through Photo Mentor Academy. Many of you know that I'm the content manager for Photo Mentor Academy and Lee Love. And at, when I first started seeing Brian's work, you guys, I would show it to people and they'd be like, wow, that's really cool. And then I would say something like, that's a toy. And they would say, what, what, that was the reaction. And that's why you, you guys are going to be so amazed when you meet Brian Carr. He is a toy photographer, a name that we've coined toy-tography, toy-tographer. And he just kicked off and you can still get the premier issue for his toy-tography magazine. Anyway, my good friend, colleague, and super talented toy photographer, toy photographer, Brian Carr. Welcome, Brian. Hello. <laughs> there he is. I love your work. I guess you know. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to try to bring us all together here for a minute. Okay. So that we can have a little conversation. All right. So the thing is that, that, you know, again, when I first started showing people your work, they could not believe that I was showing them a photograph of a toy, thus <laughs> photographer. They thought it was really a human being, that it's that realistic. Um, so what what is it? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself first to get, get us uh, warmed up into this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, well, gosh, I, I say when it comes to photography, um, I've been doing this for a little over 15 years, uh, doing photography and uh, been collecting toys uh, a little longer than that. Um, and I can say it, I, I, I got into the photography because I was just so fascinated with toys and how they move and, and things like that. And so uh, I just wanted to start capturing it with my camera, and it was all downhill from there. <laughs> it turned into this, huh? Yeah. All of this. <laughs> you know, one of the things I didn't mention about my friend Brian is what my friend Brian how, is that he's one of the funniest guys ever. You guys, he he makes me laugh every time we work together. I really laugh. I had a little bit of. Um, a little tiny role in helping with some of the editing and ghostwriting for this premiere edition. And I know you guys are going to love hit the stuff in there. There's an interview. There's all this. There's It's just so, so cool. And it's interesting. I know a little bit of your backstory, which you sort of alluded to, your collection yeah. of toys and all that. Can you, do you want to talk a little bit about what I know about like how you were into testing video games and those characters were some of your early oh, uh, yeah. subject matter and so how it spins a little bit out of there yes yes actually uh so years ago i used to um really that's what i did i, I tested video games for a living and um so the thing about testing games is uh you reach a point to where when you're done with the project they put you on call and so during that time you're on call, you're kind of at home and you just kind of, you know, wait until a next project comes in and they call you in. And it was just for this particular year, um, right around the time that they put me on call, uh, there was a company called Soda Toys, S-O-T-A. And uh, they released these toys based off of the Street Fighter video game. And so I, I bought a couple of them and I was just so fascinated with all the joints and the fact that some of them came with different heads that had different facial expressions. Um, some of those toys had special moves and therefore the toys came with different effects that you can attach to their hands. And so I was just like blown away with how much stuff you can do. 
So I had a little digital camera at the time and I just started putting the toys in different poses and snapping photos. And uh, next thing you know, I'm like, man, you know, I could probably make a, like a little story out of this. So I started putting together little toys and putting them in little scenes. And, and, uh, and you know, basically if, if one character got hit, then I would snap the photo of them getting hit and then stop and change their head and put a different expression on. <laughs> so, I love the story. This <laughs> yes. is it. It just, look, you already had a love for the character through the game. Yes. And then you found out how cool the toys were and how like having an expression and things like that isn't something you think about with a toy. I, I bet you in a way that sparked the reality that you bring still to the table because in seeing different expressions, it became more than just the one, you know, stuck. Right. In, yes. Because a lot of your stuff, I have to say, it doesn't look like a two-dimensional standing still picture. It, you are really into like that feeling, that movement, that action that is part of the video and, and gaming world. And yes. that's one of the things I think that's super cool. I love how you meshed passions in this way to become what you are. When I first started getting to know you, because I had to interview Brian for an award he won. So lucky for me, I yes. got to know him more. Um, but um, what I found out too, is that it, that you, you know, you kind of had this inspiration and imagination, but also mixed with some of the things you were already like passionate about too. And I think that kind of helps it explode into this like really intense level that you bring to it. Like you're not playing games with your right. toys. Although, <laughs> although I have to tell you guys, he did say, you know, he's starting this magazine, maybe these maybe these creatures will start get pitching in a little towards the, <laughs> the collection, but, um, I, which I thought was so funny. But yeah. so it, what inspired you then to start the toy photography magazine? What, what's behind that, 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 you know, it's not, it's not that you just found your brand identity as a toy photographer, but you thought, Hey, this has to be a magazine and I have to share it with the world. What, how did you come to that? Uh, well, that, came about because um, I had, uh, I say roughly close to five years or so, um, I had just been taking photos uh, of my collection because, you know, it's, over the years it has significantly grown. Like for instance, it, those Street Fighter toys were like little six inch, you know, figures. And now I've grown to uh, 12 inch figures. So they're like one six scale uh, figures that I'm, which, absolutely love and then the other th thing is the six inch figures the way they used to be everything was plastic uh now the way the figures are uh there's actual like fabric clothing that they have on so uh but anyway I, I was taking pictures of those and um the people who saw my photos other toy photographers who saw my photos and they were just kind of starting out uh, I would get all kinds of private messages saying, how did you do that? I want my pictures to look like yours. You know, what did you use for lights? And, and, you know, what camera do you use? And so all of these questions just kept coming in. Uh, it just, I was like, gosh, you know, I, instead of, you know, sending people these, you know, private messages, and I'm kind of repeating myself after a while, because some people are, you know, asking all these questions. It was like, uh, I, I want to come up with a way that I can reach out to everyone. So that was one part of it. Helping uh, people. That's so you. Yes. I yes. like that a lot. And that's, that's really the whole model for this magazine is to help and inspire. That's, that's the thing. So I want to be able to help other toy photographers who want to improve themselves and those who maybe already have those skills that are just looking for inspiration they can look at the photos through the magazine, look at other toy photographers' images and get inspiration. I've done that myself. I've seen uh, toy photos and I'm like, oh my gosh. I, like for instance, and I, I know, uh, Simon, you've probably seen this. So a while ago, I saw someone who had a six inch figure of the Mandalorian and they had a six inch figure of Waldo. And the way they did the image was, uh, Waldo was in the canteen and, and, uh, and the Mandalorian comes walking through the door and he's got like the book, like, where's Waldo? 
And he's kind of said the only difference with the image that this guy did was even had the little dog with him. And he's just like, oh, like I've just been caught, you know. So I got so inspired. I was like, wait a minute, I have a 12 inch figure of Waldo and I have a 12 inch figure of the Mandalorian. I was like, let me see if I can recreate, you know, that image. <laughs> so I ended up doing that myself. That was all through inspiration. This is the thing that I find so interesting. So when you when I first started talking to you too, I, I thought like this is super niche. This is niche, niche, niche. Like he's a toy photographer for these, you know, like uh, some of them are video game um, uh, things. Some of them are things like where's like Waldo as a figure. Right. Some of them are like Star Wars and other like big mo motion picture type images. So yes. I'm thinking like so I. So it started, in other words, it just kept expanding. And then there's like toy photographers in like, like toy companies that promote all kinds of dolls. And then there's people in all these groups that I've met and found through you that like take like little like Lego toy scenes. Right. I mean, they're like the right. world just keeps expanding, expanding. And they all really it, it comes down to in a way not only the passion they have for the toys but then how how do you get the photograph how do you get the photograph that tells the story that captures the imagination that shows the action and that's where i think you have seemed to so stand out and Thank there's you. so many different applications for what can be done with this that's why like for you know i talk a lot to writers bloggers content marketing people social media management people but what you bring in imagination and creativity could fit in so many million Yes. ways in anyone's <laughs> world so I'm, I'm so thrilled that you could come on today and talk about it um <laughs> yes. i think i had another question so I, I so it's not so niche your niche market is kind of what i found out that <laughs> was one yes. of the things i mean if you think about it one of the one of the biggest examples uh that you could think of as far as toy photography is just what you mentioned legos you have the lego movie and really what they, I mean, it's, I mean, when you really think about it, it's, it's all, you know, done with CG effects and things like that. But those, um, I actually just recently learned what they did, those developers uh, and all the people who worked on those movies, they actually just took each individual brick from a Lego and scanned it, you know, in it and made it a full, Tori had a full film, you know, done. It looks like stop motion, everything, but those are all toys. Those were all toys that they put into a movie. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's also fascinating, and I, I think that that's what's interesting too. So, what do you think? Are you? What are you hoping to accomplish by bringing the world more, um, more fantastic exposure to your passion? I think there might be a lot of people like me that kind of never even thought of this world. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of people deep into it, but like I can see because I like the gamification thing of business and I like business to have fun and I like, you know, to bring out creativity in different ways. I feel like business and creativity belong together. Some people like to separate them. And I think that right. I think businesses need more creativity. But yeah. what are you hoping? What's your big accomplishment in bringing this passion and this magazine to the world? Uh, I guess my, one of my things is, is I wanted to, uh, really bring more awareness to this because there are, there are a number of people who didn't even know, you know, toy photography was a thing. Uh, and so it's to, it's to bring awareness to that. But I would say my, my drive to do this and, and put these magazines out all the time is, is really to help others. Uh, and there are so many other toy photographers that are that are really really skilled, and they're just looking for um, different platforms uh, so that you know they can bring more awareness to to their work. So that's what Toy Photography Magazine is to be. It's to, just to be another platform uh, for other toy photographers to use, and again, being helped and inspired along the way. I think so many of the topics that you covered in the first magazine, since I, you know, did some of the writing and editing with you, yes. um, was really amazing because, like, people talk about lighting, but you talk about shadows. 
Um, yes. And I love that that just a posi position on, and spin that take on it because I think, you know, that's thinking outside of the box. And I yeah. think you, I'm as you're talking, you know, it's hitting me in the head suddenly. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of investigation and thinking about Web three. Okay. somewhere i really kind of didn't know if i wanted to go or not <laughs> but um, <laughs> okay. you know of course we're already gonna go because we're already here in digital i mean you know right, it's right. Kinda, yeah. you know yeah. we're in the river it's gonna flow that way so yes. you know a, a little bit of an interest I, and i i feel like there's a place for stuff like this to create worlds Yes, because it's that immersive. Some of the examples I've seen, like from the artwork community, I've seen some things I didn't understand it. I think I'm seeing I'm starting to understand more of the possibilities. And the other thing is the possibilities are so wide range that, you know, they right. can go in any direction. So and I that's, think that's, that's a new opportunity, too, for what you're bringing forth. Yes. I, I mean, really, that's the uh, that's the reason why there is a unique way that I'm doing the magazine because uh, there are other magazines out there that, that talk about toys. That's all they do is they talk about toys. Um, but I wanted this magazine to be different. I wanted this to, uh, I wanted the articles to be a certain way so that even if you don't take pictures of toys, even if that's not your thing, you can still get this magazine and at least learn some tips about photography. Oh my God, if you're a product photographer, you should pick up this edition right now. Yes. Because <laughs> even as a product photographer, that's the other thing. It's not as niche as it sounds. And that's right. another reason I wanted to bring you on because I think people and people who enjoy these video games and these movies, there's another whole group of people that could enjoy these more than they realize. And right. if you're a blogger, a writer, a content marketer, a content creator, you'll be inspired in other ways that might affect your line of work. You know, I, I think that that's something that also Brian might uh, be tickling you with, even though you don't know it yet, because yeah. <laughs> once you get cooked with Brian, you can't, can't go back. It's just, <laughs> but so my last question, and I think this is, this is probably like I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the interview, but how much a part do you think creativity, imagination and artistry play in your craft oh my gosh that's the uh, nine dollar question huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll let you tell it yes <laughs> um gosh you know i would say it's i say you're roughly putting about 70 percent of your imagination into it you have to put about 70 percent of your imagination because it's uh the the other portions of it i mean you're you're really you do have to, you definitely need some skills, uh, you know, just to, you know, position your characters in a certain way. And again, this, this goes back to what I was saying as far as it can, it can cover any area because like if I'm taking a picture of a toy and I'm using a light to cast a certain shadow or whatever, you can do the same technique as an adult, just increase the size of your light. That's I mean, but you can pretty much use the same technique. But overall, it, it is the majority of it is your imagination. And that's that's what I um, that's my goal in all of my images is I the, I mean, before I even sit down and and, uh, you know, set up my figure, a lot of times I find myself just staring at the toy and just getting my imagination in that realm. So I'm like, OK, if he's in this world, what would he do? Where would where's what's his range of motion and and what would be his motivation behind certain things and then that helps create the environment okay like what you're going what where I um because look I know because I interviewed and talked to Brian I know more friends yeah. I know that his imagination and creativity and artistry stems in part from play. And it's yes. not just lock those pictures. He puts in so much time and effort and thought into each detail. And he really does put himself in the character and like, is this how I'd swing my whatever? Like you are like into like body 
physiology, yes. all of it. Like he is that <laughs> intense in it. And the other thing that I love, and this is what I wanted you to mention too, he plays with the kids and they challenge each other <laughs> to, to the, he, with his children, challenge each other to imagine. He challenges them, they challenge him. If you want to talk a little bit about that, I love that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll uh, take a picture of my toys. Uh, and then after I take the photo, I'll bring it over to my kids. And if they look at them, they're like, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, that's nice, Dad. That's nice, Dad. And they'll go on. But if I, like, okay, if I get that kind of reaction, then let me try a little bit more. You know, so <laughs> I'll then change some things. And then I'll bring uh, the photo back to them. And they're like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, that, that looks good. That's good. And I'm like, okay. Now I know I, I, I got it. And it, when it comes to my son, he takes it a step further. He does, uh, he does stop motion with the toys. Now I'm telling you right now, I, as an adult, and it, which is funny because normally a child would not have patience for, for this stuff. But <laughs> as an adult, I see him and I'm like, I just, I know, I, I just don't have the patience to do all the, the stop motion things like that. But some of the, the stuff that my son does. I'm like, gosh, you know, actually that gives me an idea of something I want to do <laughs> with uh, with my other figures. So I'll, I'll come and set stuff up and he's have so, them. He's a collaborator. With. You know, yeah. they're like, I, I got a better idea than you. No, I got a better idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it really doesn't that up your game. And and I love that you have that uh, inside panel to, yeah. you know, that inside market to, to give you some feedback. And aren't you a smart, cool, thinking creator to, to, you know, want and take in that feedback. I yeah. think that you um, actually took the feedback to create your space here digitally, because you mentioned yes. all those DMs earlier, all those questions and how you realize that that's what people want. I think that sometimes people create something that they think people will want. And right. what you've done differently is you uh, you already have a market. People, you know, are clamoring to get a hold of this first um, edition. Listen, guys, here's something else cool about Brian's first edition. There's four different covers you can pick from, four. So you don't have to be Batman unless you're an older person like me and Batman, you know. <laughs> you can pick these other characters that, you know, might be more significant to you. I think Spider-Man is one of them. I know him. And yes. who are the other ones, Brian? Uh, so we have Spider-Man on the front cover. He's like trying to crawl on the wall there. Uh, I might be able to and, throw those images up here when I for edit. Oh, okay, this. okay. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, yes, and so one, one of the other issues we have is uh, we have Boba Fett, uh, specifically the outfit that he wore in um, the Book of Boba. The brand new. Yes, they're brand new. So he has uh, oh. he has the old armor, and you can see the kind of detail in it. But I have him standing with his helmet off, and you know they they came out really. I had a few people actually look at that image and wonder if it was actually like the, the actor, and I was like, no, that's that's just. Totally the thing. I love it. It's and, that uh, realistic. It's so cool. It's really got depth to that picture. I like yeah. it. And, and then uh, the fourth the fourth, uh, the fourth issue that we have is um, we have uh, Vulture from the Spider-Man um, Spider Homecoming uh, movie. And so it's actually the vote. You, because it was so big, we weren't able to uh, put the whole wingspan on the front cover, but you can see the, the, the wingspan on the inside of the cover, uh, but we have it to where he's got Spider-Man pinned down with, uh, with one of his little claws and, on there. So. I just think uh, yeah. it's so cool because you you know for the for the premier magazine you guys you can pick your preferred cover so yeah. make sure you grab one i will put a link for you to grab brian's magazine and to support him it's not expensive and it's super cool and um it's the first edition um he's just starting i think to work well not really just starting he's a work on three things like at uh, one's kind of guy like we we right. a few of us are <laughs> but right. yeah so he's got some really cool things coming up and in store for you next. I'm kind of excited because I'm a little in the know about a couple of the things. Um, but um, I'm also curious to see how it's going to pan out once we're, once the first premiere edition gets, you know, the subscribers keep coming in and see who of the four covers gets ordered the most. I'm, I'll be curious to see that. Yes. <laughs> 
So yes, it's actually looking uh, really good so far. So yeah. Oh, and, actually, oh, and you have one it, more announcement too, which I just learned a day or two ago. You're able to get print copies also now. Yes, yes, we're They're actually a bit working more on that. Expensive, of course, because we got to print them, right? But right. yeah. Talk yes. about that a sec. You can get those through what is it, Azuzu? I'll get a link for that for sure in the yes, book. yes. Actually, we're we're gonna see if we can um uh we're working on things right now to see if you could just go straight to the Toytography Mag website and you can be able to buy it straight from there. That would be super yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it's something coming out. The other unique thing about the issues was um we actually had uh six front covers uh and so we had a uh, we have a toy photography mag uh facebook group oh, and so link. i yeah i post those images up there and we had everyone vote and out of the six we picked the top four so those four images and we're pre it's just for the premiere issue uh but those those four covers were voted on by the fans of uh of the magazine and if you guys are interested in learning about toytography or you have your own figure collection and never thought of them as being something for fodder for creating photography and different designs and creations, you can join Brian's Facebook group too and learn yeah. about it and, and maybe even have a, a say in something that comes out in a future magazine. For now, the plan is these will be quarterly. Right. Not, right. Right. So, so because I think in part he wants them to be real good quality, uh, high quality. And of the response on the first one so far, everything I've heard, people are blown away, Brian. Yes, yes. It, uh, we've had a, a few people that, that really love the magazine. Uh, I got to say there was there was one person in particular who thought that it was like, wow, so I, I thought this was just going to be like one big picture book, but there's actually articles <laughs> so you can... Yeah. I think help. people appreciate so, that because look, you're giving them insight into how they can produce, you know, what right. you do. And, you know, like I said, you, you are so good at it. It's, it's really a unique talent to be able to make uh, a figure, a, 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 an object look right. like a real human and doing, you know, things. <laughs> it's just unbelievable how realistic I might be able to throw some, photos in here okay. for, <laughs> when we get to produce it but i really appreciate your time thank you for coming on the mix sizzle and shake your business podcast where we talk about everything business and content and today's content with brian pretty creative cool stuff check him out you guys i'd appreciate it thanks brian all right okay Thanks for checking out this Right Mix for Business presentation. Remember, if you need to bling your blog or you need help with any content assets for your business, Right Mix for Business. Yep. <laughs>